Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! The government is considering a ban on flammable cladding for high-rise buildings after the Grenfell Tower fire, which left 72 people dead. Ministers announced that a consultation would take place just hours after the publication of an official review into the Grenfell fire, which had stopped short of recommending an outright ban. A year after the fire, survivors say they're disappointed that more hasn't been done. The Labour MP and Grenfell campaigner David Lammy called the review a whitewash. Our Home Affairs correspondent Tom Simons reports. This disaster triggered a housing safety crisis. Residents turfed out of their homes, buildings stripped with massive bills for putting them right. The realisation that the building regulations had failed. Good morning, everyone. Enter Dame Judith Hackett, the senior engineer called on to review the building regulations, under pressure for weeks to ban materials which burn from tall buildings. But she didn't. If people, if people look at this report and say it doesn't go far enough because it didn't ban cladding, then I will accept that as a criticism. That is the criticism. And I accept that. But what I would say in response to that is that what I found is a problem with the building of high-rise buildings that goes far beyond people putting cladding onto the building that is not compliant. But she did say if the government bans it, I would support that. And sure enough, within a few hours, but 11 months after Grenfell, the Communities Secretary rose to his feet in the Commons. Having listened carefully to concerns, the government will consult on banning the use of combustible materials in cladding systems on high-rise residential buildings. A consultation, but not the decision campaigners wanted. It was good for the government to be able to to take the step into realising that this is something they need to do. However, they should have done it today. Cladding is being removed from some buildings, but banning it completely would mean changing the complex system of guidance that the industry uses to meet the building regulations. And Dame Judith's report doesn't go there. Instead, she takes aim at the culture of the industry. She says it's a race to the bottom, jobs done as quickly and cheaply as possible, ignorant of the rules, and indifferent to the safety aspects. She recommends a new authority to oversee safety, more rigorous enforcement, simpler rules, more power for residents and the industry itself to lead the change. But can it be trusted? Take a look at what's been going on with fire tests in recent years. Manufacturers or designers write desktop studies based on test results when they want to know how one brand of cladding performs next to a different brand of insulation. But what if an architect wants different cladding? A new fire test isn't needed. Another desktop study can be produced assessing how the new material would have performed in the original fire test. If that happens repeatedly, the designs being assessed on paper eventually bear no resemblance to the one originally tested in the real world. Both the Hackett Review and the government want tighter rules about desktop studies. Her reforms could take years, but thousands of people like Lucy Hopkins are waiting to hear what will happen about the dangerous cladding on the outsides of their homes. I think at the moment there's so much uncertainty for me as a flat owner and I think for the people in the rest of the block as well, we just have no idea what the financial impact of this is going to be. It looks like we're being left to sort out um, this problem by ourselves. The anniversary of Grenfell Tower approaches. Repairing the wider damage it's done is an enormous task. Tom Simons, BBC News. The Housing Secretary announced today that flammable cladding could be banned from high-rise buildings following the Grenfell Tower disaster. Now, it's something that survivors of the fire and campaigners have long called for, but the announcement came hours after a government-commissioned review said such a move wasn't necessary. Here's our science editor, Tom Clark. The aim of today's report was plain, to ensure a fire like Grenfell Tower that claims so many lives never happens again. But it stopped short of what campaigners, experts and MPs demanded, a ban on combustible cladding which fuelled the blaze. 
Is that what you'd like to have done, is ban combustible materials? I do not think combustible materials should be used on high-rise buildings. Then why didn't you say so in the report? Because I think the regulations already call for that. They call for people to build buildings that, that will not burn. The report accused the construction industry of a race to the bottom over fire safety. But Dame Judith argues just focusing on cladding would distract from fatal flaws across a whole system. The report calls for a new regulatory framework overseen by a watchdog with tougher enforcement powers. Residents will be consulted on changes affecting the safety of their home and there will be more effective tests for construction materials. But in a twist, just hours after the report was published, the government weighed in. Having listened carefully to concerns, the government will consult on banning the use of combustible materials in cladding systems on high-rise residential buildings. Of course, a consultation is not a ban, and tests on many cladding materials are unequivocal. There's been recommendations from the survivors, the bereaved, many, many experts that the cladding is dangerous and it needs to be outright banned. We need to learn from other countries as well that have outright banned this cladding. And where does that leave the tens of thousands of people still occupying more than 300 high-rise buildings covered in dangerous cladding? Pauline Jones lives on Salford's Pendleton estate, still waiting for cladding to be replaced. You can't really trust anybody with your safety, can you, really? You can rush into something uh, and be sorry that you've rushed into it after you've already rushed into it. And it doesn't make anybody's life any safer. Like other councils, Salford has now decided to preempt consultation and legislation and remove all combustible cladding from its blocks. For future buildings, the Hackett Review has taken a major step towards fixing the system that allowed Grenfell to happen. But will it be enough to restore trust in those charged with keeping us safe? Tom Clark, ITV News. The decision not to call for a ban on inflammable cladding by the author of a review into the Grenfell Tower fire unleashed a chorus of criticism from across the political spectrum. Jackie Long is in West London now. Jackie. Well, within hours of the review being made public, the government had announced it would consult on a ban, prompting Grenfell survivors to ask why action couldn't be taken immediately. But the report's author, Dame Judith Hackett, warned that banning cladding on its own would not fix a building regulation system she described as broken. Paul McNamara reports. To get a phone call at 1am waking me up by a very good friend of mine, neighbour that I grew up with since childhood, screaming at me in the most terrifying voice, telling me to get out, get out of the building. Shaheen wasn't at home on the night of June 14th last year, the night he lost his home, his belongings, his community, but his mother was. The first thing I asked him was, I didn't even explain where I was, I just said, get my mum out of the tower. Terrified, he drove home. The closest he could get was half a mile away. And I just looked up and I saw my building, my, you know, my childhood home in flames, in the most, it looked like a horror site. I just, it was something out of a movie, it wasn't real. And I just froze for about 10 seconds. And then I just shot down as fast as I could to where I was told my mum might be. Shaheen's family survived the blaze. 72 of his neighbours didn't. Since then, the nation has asked, how was this possible and how can it be prevented from happening again? Today, a review of building regulations in response to the Grenfell fire was released. This report is utterly damning. It accuses the system of ignorance, prioritising cost over safety and accusing the culture of being a race to the bottom. It says that the whole of the regulatory system needs an overhaul for high rises. But the one thing it falls short on is calling for a banning of the cladding that once surrounded this tower. The cladding that many say is responsible for how the fire spread. It was a ban Grenfell residents, the Royal Institute of British Architects and many MPs have called for. Good morning everyone. But the report's author here, Dame Judith Hackett, disagrees. It was thought the government might introduce a ban just hours later. The government will consult on banning the use of combustible materials in cladding systems on high-rise residential buildings. Yeah. A consultation on a ban is all that's been promised, though, leaving many experts bewildered and angry. Has it missed an opportunity? Yes, it certainly has. You know, 
why put materials on a building which you know have the potential for causing harm? The argument is that if all of these changes are implemented, combustible materials won't end up on buildings in the first place because they won't get to that point. Does that hold water? Not without banning it. There'll always be somebody who'll come along and provide a test which says it passes. One group that has backed the report's finding, though, is a group that knows more than most why change is needed. I think the trouble with a blanket ban, it's simply about addressing the symptom rather than the cause of the issue. The cause of the issue for me is better addressed if we look at a holistic approach to the system that ensures we have robust testing in place, that we have strong regulation and competent people to make decisions around the products that are used on our buildings. One other point that today's report makes is that residents should be listened to and yet it failed to back a fundamental ban which Grenfell residents have called for consistently. How does it feel then that yet again your voice has not been listened to? We're getting used to uh, a system where we have to continuously repeat ourselves over and over again. We are met with patronising meetings where we go in and they, they treat us as if you know, our word matters and then the action doesn't reflect that. It gives us sleepless nights to know that Grenfell fire could happen again because this cladding is on schools, it's on hospitals, it's on people's homes and so far nothing really has been done to ensure that pe this cladding is taken down. Well, earlier today I sat down with the author of the review uh, into the Grenfell tragedy, Jane Dudith Hackett, and I started by asking her what her re report actually recommends. My report recommends uh, a complete overhaul of the regulatory framework uh, for high-rise buildings. We are getting buildings that people are living in that are not fit for purpose, are not uh, adequately protected to ensure that they are safe in the event of fire, and that's what we have to change. Why did you hold back on flammable materials? Because at the moment the, reg the regulatory system as I see it is very is clear on that point that you should not use flammable materials in buildings that are higher than high-rise buildings. Others say it's not so I'm very I've said in the report it needs to be clearer it's not just about cladding it's about a whole system that needs to ensure that people are thinking consciously about building something that is safe. But cladding is the emotional issue, isn't it? Of that, course it everybody is. Everybody knows I recognize cladding that. was at the root of the deaths at Grenfell. Absolutely, I recognise that. So why couldn't you just at least single out flammable cladding? Because in my view, the regulations already say you should not use flammable materials on high-rise buildings. So was Grenfell illegally built? Grenfell in my interpretation was not compliant and what has been found since is that Grenfell is not alone. There are a number of other buildings out there where the cladding that is on them is not compliant with the current regulation. So as an engineer what that tells me is that whatever the spec is today and we can continue to debate whether it says flammable or non-flammable, people are flouting the system anyway. So you're actually saying people who build buildings that are non-compliant, which is the word you use, yes. um, you know, sh should actually be punished. They must be held to account, yes, and in the future... Well, that means eventually jailing them if they're committing a criminal offence. It certainly means there needs to be much serious, more serious sanctions than there are today. Part of the reason that they take the chances they do today are because, uh, because the penalties are not sig significant enough, in my view. Uh, but what I'm also trying to do is put a preventive system in place. I want to stop tragedies like Grenfell ever happening again by putting in place a system that will pick up those shortcomings much earlier in the process and hold people to account for putting people at risk, not waiting until the tragedy happens. But you would advocate uh, remedial alterations to all the buildings that you believe are non-compliant? That will be for the regulator to do as part of the review process and to agree a program But you as a building engineer... I'm a chemical a engineer. Well, I, mean, I know how to build safe facilities to operate in the chemical industry. I do not understand why this industry sector does not get that it is part of their job and part of their moral responsibility to deliver buildings that are safe for people to live in.
So you're shocked by what you've seen? Yes, I have been very shocked by what I've seen and some of the attitudes and some of the practices that are commonplace in other industry sectors that seem to have passed this sector by, like the ability to be able to trace what you use, uh, to be able to, to record the change process in a methodical way. The lack of discipline has shocked me, yes. Well, many of the survivors and bereaved had already made clear that they were hoping the review would call for a ban. I'm joined now by Antonio Roncolato, who escaped from Grenfell Tower with his son, and by Melvin Akins, a local resident who's been campaigning for better housing since the fire. Antonio Roncolato, Dame Judith in her review today says a ban in itself is not the answer. What's your view? Well, my view is that we are very upset. It's totally disappointing. Uh, don't forget that it was a catastrophe. Uh, so many people died, and the least that she could have recommended was to take action now and to ban this uh, inflammable uh, material to be applied into, into towers, and basically. She was quite clear today that, in a sense, she said that flammable material should never, never. have been on the tower. That about, it was effectively banned already, but it's about an industry that is flouting the rules, and that's what needs to change. Isn't that right? Yes, it is. But you know, uh, why don't we use the word prevention rather than um, uh, investigation, rather than many other beautiful words that they're coming up with? If we prevent things from happening, then we don't, ha we wouldn't have all these problems. We would save a lot of money, and a lot of human life would have been saved already. Melvin Akins, I mean, she does talk today about a building industry that sounds out of control, cutting corners, cutting costs, and that that is what needs to change. She talks about a need for cultural change. Do you agree with her? I absolutely agree with that, but I think at the very least a temporary ban should have been called for, considering that the government have already committed to spend up to 400 million removing cladding of existing buildings. Um, it, you know, we should be banning it. We should absolutely be banning it. Otherwise, we're going to see other organisations or other other companies potentially use this cladding in the meantime. What about the point that she makes quite forcefully that you know essentially this material was banned for the use in high rise anyway? But the building industry is flouting the rules. That needs to change, doesn't yes. it? It must. I think, I think the regulations need to be clear cut. I mean, if we look at the regulations that we've got for materials inside buildings, the Furnishings and Furniture Act of 1988, it clearly says that materials should not be flammable. Now, if we have such clear cut rules for materials inside buildings, why do we not have equal rules for materials outside buildings? And it's about these rules not being properly applied, isn't it? And that is devastating for someone like you who's escaped the tower yes. and lost friends. Yes, absolutely. This is a tragedy. Let's not forget that, again, so many people died and lives of many other people are wrecked and destroyed forever. So, you know, what are we waiting for? Lesson has to be learned, but should have been learned right after, you know, last year, right after that fire. Like, that tragedy. Now is, you know, okay, let's let's move on and let's we want to see action now basically. So it's not just about the industry though, it's about the oversight. Where was the oversight? And she's very critical about that today. Yes, and I agree, you know, this the fire regulations have national implications. It's not just about what happened here and there's a public inquiry that's obviously going to investigate that more thoroughly. But these fire regulations have implications for people in social housing, people in private housing. You know, this needs to change and we need to make sure this never happens again but by making sure the regulations are watertight. And very, very, I mean, the government have said they're going to have this consultation. Do you welcome that? I don't think a consultation is needed. I think action needs to be taken. Everybody can see what is blindingly obvious. A consultation at this point, I think, is just delaying essentially the inevitable when wasting time. Anthony, take agree. action now, take action now. Never mind consultation, proposal and so on. Take action now. And very briefly, we know that the inquiry on Monday will start to hear from the bereaved and survivors. This is going to be difficult for everyone, isn't it? Yes, uh, it will be difficult because it will bring back a lot of memories. M many people will have to talk and see, you know, and go back to that, you know, dreadful night. And uh, yes, but, you know, we are there we, as a community and trying to support and help each other. Antonio Roncolas and Melvin Akins, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. It's not far off a year since the Grenfell Tower fire killed 71 people. <clears throat> In the days and weeks after it, cladding entered the national consciousness. Newsnight brought you a series of revelations about how institutions we trust to protect our safety had colluded in the flouting of regulations. Today, we got Dame Judith Hackett's review of those building regulations. It was a review that stopped short of proposing a complete ban in the use of combustible materials 
in future buildings. A verdict the United Ar Architects, insurers and Grenfell survivors in their dismay. Hours after the backlash, the government announced that it will consult on banning flammable cladding after all. So what did the report actually say? Here's our policy editor, Chris Cook. England has had building regulations to protect citizens from fires since the 13th century. Throughout our history though, there's been one clear pattern. Our most important fire safety decisions have always come at moments like this, at times of grief and loss. This is the monument. It's in the centre of London and it commemorates the Great Fire of 1666. Shortly after that conflagration, Parliament passed new building regulations and they were very simple. They simply stated that buildings in the city had to have walls made of stone or brick because they don't transmit fire. You could only use wood for windows, doors and shop fronts. An advantage of those rules is they were very simple. Everyone could understand them and you could see if your neighbours were following them. But they were what we would call today prescriptive rules. They said what you could and couldn't do very bluntly. Good morning everyone. In her review of building regulations, Dame Judith Hackett has gone a different way. Her review proposed that builders should use whatever material they please so long as they can prove it's safe to a new, beefed-up safety regulator. Her report was clear. There's no need to bring in bans on building materials such as combustible cladding. My concern is if you simply ban cladding, given that people are already putting material on there that is not compliant with the current regulations, if you just ban it, who's to say they won't still use it? Unless we put a system in place that really does stop them from cutting corners and taking chances, the ban will have no impact. But here's a new housing secretary an hour or so after that interview. Having listened carefully to concerns, the government will consult on banning the use of combustible materials in cladding systems on high-rise residential buildings. Even architects who traditionally fight against prescriptive rules want this one. I think the easiest way to make sure people are safe is to give them very simple, clear rules. My expert panel has been working for 11 months now here at the RIBA and we do not believe that you should have materials of any combustibility on the outside of buildings at risk. Why would you put something that could catch fire and might catch fire on the outside of a building where people sleep? The government is, is recommended to consider... Lots of the report is uncontentious, like the new super regulator, tidying up regulation, clear rules on who is liable for what. But there are holes. For example, one way to prove cladding designs are safe at the moment is this. It's a so-called 8414 test. If you want to use combustible cladding, you can use it if it survives this process. But there's enormous scepticism that these tests are useful. The test sample will typically be designed as to pass a test. So it will have extra detailing in it. Um, it, will it will be riveted generally. Um, it, will in it will have extra fire barriers in it. Um, in reality, we those details don't exist. So the FPA has run its own test using real-world installers, fitting the materials as they would in reality and treating them to wear and tear. They find that cladding designs may be a lot less safe than tests on pristine, perfect, over-engineered test installs suggest. Dame Judith's proposals would also permit desktop studies. That's when you don't have an actual test, but pay an engineer to write a report stating their opinion that a design is safe. A desktop study is not an actual test. It's just somebody sitting at a desk looking at statistics and, and uh, making something come out at the end of it, which perhaps is right. What if it isn't? There's a big intellectual question here too. Dame Judith thinks our building industry isn't up to standard, but she proposes a system built on their professional discretion. Her proposals will not be the final word on building safety that some we're expecting. And Chris Cook is here now. Chris, why don't you just ban combustible material? So, the sort of, if you like, the small answer to that is 
that these plastic insulation foams do have advantages over old-fashioned heavy mineral wool for a very thin slice you could basically have the same thermal efficiency as quite a big wedge of mineral wool. The long answer is, the, the principles answer is, that she doesn't want to stifle innovation. And she has this idea that um, if you have this very prescriptive rule set, if you had a sort of 17th century style, these are the things you can and can't do, what you would end up with is basically no innovation in building, and that would mean more expensive builders. She also worries about a sort of tick box culture that might take over buildings, so people will worry about the strict letter of the law, not the overall design. Let's move on now to another story that you uh, bought to Newsnight, and there have been developments in it tonight. So, the uh, few papers actually, but I think mainly the Telegraph, are reporting that uh, John Burko yesterday uh, said that, told, well, said in the chamber that Andrea Ledson was a stupid woman and that he was, uh, that she was effing useless. Now, this comes on the back of allegations about him bullying two of his secretaries, which he denies. Uh, it comes earlier this week, the uh, Committee on Standards in Parliament decided not to pursue uh, an investigation into him, but he's not in a good place at the moment. We should point out he denies bullying uh, his secretaries, but says that yesterday was a very stressful day in Parliament. So he doesn't deny what happened yesterday? He doesn't quite deny it, no. Chris, thank you very much indeed. I've been